I'm sitting at a coffee shop right now, one of my favorite places. Every day I go to this, it's called the Green Beanery in Peebles, Ohio. It's a simple little place and I don't come here because I'm into coffee. Usually I buy a coffee and I drink half of it and it's not an expensive place like Starbucks. We're a little town and I think it cost me $1.26 for a coffee. But I come here because I get inspired. I don't know why, but coffee shops inspire me. And it's, I write a lot of books in this place. I, 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 I journal about my own life. Um, I think a lot about the spiritual life when I'm sitting in a coffee shop. And so today's mystical meandering is about the daily offering and the importance of the daily offering. You know, when I first came to the Lord at 15 years old, I was introduced to the daily offering. There's an old prayer by, um, uh, oh, the Apostleship of Prayer, it's called. And it's a great prayer. Oh, my Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins. And it, it, it goes on to reasons why you're making the offering. What I want to talk about is, what does that mean, the daily offering? Now, sure, if you want to pray that prayer, uh, pre please pray it. I pray it every day. But I want to talk about the heart and the essence of making a daily offering or a morning offering. If you turn to Romans chapter 12, Paul writes this, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Our daily offering is part of our worship of God. What is it? It's when we take our lives and we give him our life. You know, the question is a lot of time for Christians is, have you given your life to Jesus? And my response is, amen. I gave my life to Jesus for me. Yes, I would say my life was given to Jesus on June 3rd, 1963. That's when my life was given to Jesus, when I was baptized. And as a teenager, I came into a personal relationship with Jesus and, and made that commitment to Jesus personal. I appropriated it to me. But it wasn't a one-time event. For me, it's a daily event. It's, it's a moment by moment in a lot of ways. It's Jesus, I, I am yours. That, that's what you're saying, is you're renewing your baptismal covenant. In baptism, Jesus gave you his life, and then we're called to respond by giving our lives to him. And for me, this is a way, this daily offering is a way for me daily to say, Jesus, I am yours. You know, you might, you might say it like this if you were to pray it from your heart. You might start by just saying, Jesus, I'm yours. Take my life and, and do with it as you will. All that I am and all that I have. I, I think that's important to make that distinction. All that I am. I want to be yours, Jesus, with, with all that I am. Love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul. All of me, Jesus, I give to you. For your honor and for your glory, do with my life as you will. But I also give him all that I have. My first thing that I give to him is my marriage, my family, and uh, my ministry. I also give it to Jesus every day. I give to him I, the things I possess. If it belongs to Jesus, now you're walking in the will of God. And above all, that's what we want. We want to do the will of God. How do you do the will of God? Well, first do the will of God by giving him your life, giving him all that you are and all that you have. You know, years ago, I used to teach, teach guitar. And one of the best students I ever had was a, a brother that was mentally handicapped. 
um, he was involved in a fire when he was a child and because of the lack of oxygen, um, it, it did create some, some problems for, for his brain. But he was the best student I ever had. Joey was his name. God bless you, Joey. I, it was a really, it was a good experience for me. I loved him and he loved me. And I remember Joey one time, I, I went to teach him a chord on a guitar. And when you teach guitar, you draw a little chart and you teach people how to read uh, a chord chart. This is where you put your fingers, right? So I drew the chart and I said, Joey, look at the, the chart and put your fingers on the neck of the guitar. So he, Joey put his fingers and then as he strummed down, it didn't sound so good. <laughs> and I said, Joey, look at the chord chart. So he looked at it and he took his fingers off and he put them back on, but still when he strummed, it wasn't sounding so good. At first, it's because he had his fingers in the wrong place. Then it, he got them in the right place, but it was buzzing. You got to put your fingers in the right place on the fret so it doesn't buzz. Well, I, I said to Joey, okay, let me help you. And I went to move his fingers up to move them and put them in the right place and his fingers were stiff. I, I, I couldn't move them. You see, what he needed to do is he needed to surrender control. And that's the importance of the daily offering. We're giving our lives to Jesus to surrender control of our life. That he's the Lord and we're not. Well, what I said to Joey, hey, relax your fingers. Do you, and he kept fighting me about, I would go to move his fingers and he was, Joey, relax your fingers. And once he relaxed, once he let go of control, I, I know how to play guitar. I was able to move his fingers and put them in the right place. And then I said, Joey, strum. And when he strummed, a beautiful G chord came out. It, it, it wasn't... You see, in music, if you don't have the right organization of notes, it's not, it's going to be, it's going to, oh, I can't think of the word right now, and I'm a musician. And if you're a musician, you're going, well, you don't know what you're talking about. But the idea, it, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't, it doesn't flow together. I can't think of the word right now. Jiminy Cricket. Well, good humility for me. But once it's disconcordant, I think that's the word. I don't think that's the word, but we'll use that word. The chord doesn't flow right. The notes don't sound right together. You know, you just can't sit at a piano and just push your hand down or you just get noise. But once you have the right structure, then, then, it's sweet music. Isn't that our spiritual life? We surrender the control of life to Jesus. The truth is, you don't know how to live life right. You don't know how to live it in the divine way that God calls us to live. You can live it in your own way, but it's gonna be disconcordant. It's, it's not gonna be harmonious. It's not going to sound good together. So we surrender our control to Jesus in the daily offering. Lord, I'm yours. And he's able then to take our fingers. Hear the coffee machine, the grinding coffee. He's able to take our fingers and move them into the right places. He's able to take our lives. He's able to take our personality. He's able to take our character. He's able to take our possessions. He's able to take our desires. He's able to take our dreams. He's able to take us and place us on the keyboard of the song of God. And it comes out harmonious. I want to encourage you to daily come up with your own thing. Ask God how you can daily give your life to him, present yourself to him, sacrifice yourself to him.
so that it's I no longer I lives, but Christ Jesus living in you. Galatians 2.20. Thanks for listening to my mystical meandering on the daily offering. God bless you.